Today we're going to be focusing on the rate of change and slope. We have two pieces of vocabulary today. Uh, the first one is the rate of change. The rate of change is basically a ratio that describes how much one quantity changes with the respect to a change in another quantity. The slope is the ratio of a change in the y coordinates with a change in the x coordinates. So the first one we're going to talk about is the rate of change. If the, this might help you to write, if you write this down, the rate of change is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So these are some uh, three little steps for you that might help you out. First step, take two points in the y coordinates and subtract them. So then the next step is you take the corresponding x points and you subtract those. You then divide the answers. So write these three steps down. In the next slide we're going to be doing some examples. So off to the left we have a table. We have our xy table. In the x's we have 2, 4, and 6. The y's we have 78, 156, and 234. We are trying to find the rate of change. Remember, to find the rate of change, it is the change in y over the change in x. So as for the, remember the very first step that we had, we are supposed to find two points in the y table. So we have two points here. We'll have 56 and we'll have 78. We're supposed to find the difference between the two. The difference means I'm supposed to subtract them. So let's subtract. We are going to subtract 156 from 78. We're just going to set this up first. So, second step, I'm supposed to find the corresponding x points. So, what corresponds with 156 in the x coordinate? So, 156 is here. 4 is the corresponding x coordinate. And I need to subtract the corresponding with 78. So 78 is here. I need to subtract 2. So now we can solve through. We have 156 minus 78 and that is equal to 78. And 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. So we have 78 is over 2, or 78 divided by 2. If we simplify this, we can divide both 78 and 2 by 2. So if we simplify it, we have 1 and 39. So the rate of change is 39 over 1. So now we're going to see if this function is linear. We have two functions, this one and this one. We need to see if the function is linear. So we need, remember, we need to set up, we need to find the change in y, change in y over the change of x. So what we're going to do, we're going to go from, if we look at the first one, we're going to go from, we're going to compare these first two. So let's see here, the change in y that we have, we have, let's just pick 4 and 2. So we have 4 minus 2. 
over and the, the corresponding points are 2 and 1. So we have 2 minus 1. That is equal to 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Now, the next part that we do, we have to compare this next set of points to see if the function, if the rate of change is the exact same as this one. So if we have 6 and 4, we do 6 minus 4 all over 3 minus 2. So 6 minus 4 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. Now we have two different rates of change. We have 2 over 1, and we have 2 over 1. This means that it is that this function is linear. If these rate of changes are the same, then yes, it is linear. So now let's try the second one. We need to find the rate of change. So if we have 4 minus 1, because we're going to change in y first, then we have 4 minus 2. So 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. So this is the first rate of change that we have. Now let's compare these. The change in y, we have 6 minus 4. Change in x, we have 6 minus 4. So 6 minus 4 is... 0 is, uh, sorry, 2, and 6 minus 4 is 2. So now we have two rates of change. We have 3 over 2 and 2 over 2. Since these are not the same, this means that it is not linear. To see if the function is linear, make sure that the rates of change are similar from point to point. So now we're going to be focusing on slope. I have to say slope and rate of change are very similar. So as before, we already wrote this down once, but the slope is basically a ratio of the change in y over the change an x. And this is the formula. I need you to write this formula down. So uh, the formula for slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So let's look over here at these two coordinate points. What I mean by y2 and y1, x2 and x1. Remember we have, this is x and y. But this is the first coordinate. So this is x1, and this is y1. And this is, and if we go to the second one, remember this is x and that's y. So this is the second coordinate, so this is x2. And this is y2. So all that you have to do now is to plug in the numbers for the, co for the corresponding either y2, y1, x2, or x1. So for y2, our y2 is negative 2. So let's plug it in. Negative 2 minus y1 is 3. Now our x2 is 2, so plug it in, 
our x1 is negative 1, so plug it in. Now we need to solve. So we have negative 2 minus 3. Remember, if it's minus 3, if it's negative 2 minus 3, you can add the opposite. So negative 2 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 5. And then 2 minus a negative 1. Remember, you can add the opposite. So 2 minus a negative 1 is a positive 3. So our slope in this equi in the, with these two points is negative 5 over 3. So now we're going to try a couple examples. Remember, we have our formula. Remember what our formula is. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's label these real quick. We have x1, y1, x2, y2. All you have to do is just plug in the numbers. So we have y2 is 5, y1 is 0, divided through x2 is 1, x1 is negative 2. So if we solve that, 5 minus 0 is equal to 5. Now 1 minus a negative 2, remember we can add the opposite, so 1 plus a positive 2 is equal to 3. So our slope is 5 thirds. This is a positive 5 thirds. When we graph this, the slope is going, or the line will be going up, going a positive. So this means that it is a positive slope. Positive slope because the, the answer is positive. Alright, so let's try the second one. We have x1, y1, x2, y2. So for y, we'll have negative 3 minus y1 is 4 all over x2 is 2, x1 is negative 3. So if we solve this, negative 3 minus 4, remember we add the opposite, so negative 3 plus a negative 4 is a negative 7. 2 minus a negative 3, remember we can add the opposite, so 2 plus a positive 3 is 5. And this is our slope. It's negative 7 fifths. So when we graph this, it's going to look like this. The line is going to be going slanted downwards. This is going to be, this is called a negative slope because the answer is negative. I have two more examples. So let's try to find the slope of these. Remember, we have y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So when we set this up, our y, we have our x1, y1, x2, y2. So our y2, we have minus 1, minus our y2 is minus 1. Our x2 is 2, and our y1 is negative 3. So if we solve this through, remember, uh, so if we have one, negative 1 minus a negative 1, remember you can add the opposite. So negative 1 plus a positive 1 is 0. 2 minus a negative 3, remember you can add the opposite. So 2 plus a positive 3 
is 5. Now 0 over 5. 0 divided by 5 is equal to 0. We have a slope of 0. When we graph this, the line is going to go directly straight across. This is important. So, if in the y-axis, if the numbers are exactly the same, the slope is going to be 0. Again, if the numbers in the y-axis are exactly the same, the slope is going to be 0. And the line is going to be going straight across. So please, write that down. Now, let's focus on the next one. If we have, we have our x1, y1, x2, y2. So if we set this up, our y, we have y2 is 3, y1 is 4, our x2 is negative 2, our x1 is negative 2, so when we solve this through, 3 minus 4 is equal to a negative 1. 2 minus a negative 2, remember you can add the opposite. So negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. Now, you cannot divide anything by 0. So our answer is undefined. because you cannot solve this. When it is undefined, our graph, the line is going to go straight up and down. So, if we have the x-coordinates that are exactly the same, our slope is going to be undefined and it goes directly up and down. Again, if the x-coordinates are exactly the same, our answer is undefined, and it goes directly up and down. So now we have to find what the missing point is. We are given what the two points are, or what the two coordinates are, but one, one of the numbers is missing, and we're given what the slope is. So remember, we have x2, or we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is equal to our slope. Slope is also written as m. That is what the, uh, the variable that's used. So slope and m are exactly the same. So all that we have to do Take all the information that we are given and plug it into this equation. So if we set it up, remember x1, y1, x2, y2. We are solving for this x. So if we have y2 is x minus 4 divided by negative 5 minus 1 is equal to 1 third. We are trying to solve for this x. So now we can set up uh, some ratios and we can cross multiply. So, if we cross multiply, we can cross multiply 3 and x minus 4. So, if we set that up, that'd be 3, and we're going to be multiplying it times x minus 4. On, the, on this side, we're going to be multiplying 1. And whenever negative 5 
minus 1 is. So let's first work with the left side. We can simplify what's in the parentheses first with negative 5 minus 1. So remember if we add the opposite, negative 5 plus a negative 1 is equal to a negative 6. So we have 1 times a negative 6, which is basically just negative 6. So I'll just, I'll just write negative 6. That's equal to, now on the right side, we have 3 times x, which is 3x. Remember, we're doing the distributive property. Minus 3 times 4, which is 12. Now we just have a two-step equation that we can solve. So we can add 12 to both sides, and this will cancel out. So negative 6 plus 12. I'm just going to write this all over here since I need a little more room. Negative 6 plus 12 is equal to a positive 6. Everything left on the right side is 3x. So to find x, I have to divide by 3 on both sides. So in this case, 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So with this, 2 is equal to our missing point, which is what x was. When you're going through your problems in your book, I highly recommend working through the problems in the book and coming back to the video to see what I've done so that you can see how I walked through it.